Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. This is Christopher Aaron. It is the 16th of August, 2017. We have nothing less than a gold breakout that we must discuss. If you are at all following the precious metals or interested in the precious metals, you must pay attention to what we are discussing here in this video. Let's get right into it. The precious metals market has been sending us a lot of mixed signals over the last eight months, no doubt. But it looks like we are finally starting to get some resolution to that. A nice day today, recovering the weakness from the last couple of days in the spot gold price back to 1284 as this is being broadcast. Switching over to look at spot silver 1709. Silver is performing well, and we will focus mostly on gold here because the technical pattern is much more significant in gold compared to silver, and silver should follow gold on a leveraged basis, of course, with some twists and turns along the way. So what are we talking about here? Now, if you have only been looking at the gold market for a brief period of time, or if you are sort of a mainstream stock market investor who has no interest in gold this is the chart you will see if you pull up the chart of the last six years and you will just see a major decline that happened between 2011 and the present and something of a basing period going on here but really nothing to write home about because after all at the close today and of course we're looking at the december futures contract here for the close here today, which is slightly different than the spot price, but the December futures contract closing at 1282. And you'd be saying, well, that was pretty much the same price uh, four years ago. So, you know, what is there to really get excited about here? So this is what I think the casual investor, the mainstream investor is looking at right now. I think there is something else happening here in the gold market, which is extremely significant that is going to mark this process as what looks like a major low. So let's switch over to the form of analysis we do here with a strong emphasis on trend analysis. And there are dozens and dozens of forms of analysis that one can do. I am big on trend analysis. I am big on momentum. I am big on volume and Fibonacci retracements, as well as some of the ratio analysis that you see here down at the bottom. One of the things I love to look at though primarily is this trend analysis. So we're talking about the trend in gold from the all-time high in 2011 at $1,923 per ounce, drawing a linear trend line. And we'd been focusing on the many, many attempts to break out of this trend line over the last year and what was shaping up as a triangle pattern here. And wouldn't you know it, bringing up the key, it looks like right now we are getting a legitimate breakout attempt here in the gold market. Certainly, certainly a much stronger attempt, at least sustaining this movement than the past few attempts. So when I go back and look at this chart, and I look at this triangle formation that's been forming here for the last 20 months, it's clear to me that there are a series of attempts here uh, to define this triangle. We're looking at this major low here in December 2015 at $1,045 an ounce. We're looking at the series of attempts here to overcome the declining trend line. We're calling this all one major attempt. We're talking about this series of five or six mini attempts here. This was a series of attempts before a massive failure after the Trump victory. So one, one, two being this major bottom at 1122 in December of 2016. A series of two attempts here over the last six months. And if this was the third major low of this triangle, now, technically speaking, we only need to see two major hits, right? In order to form a line, you need two hits. So you have two on the lower line, and you clearly have more than two on the upper line here defining this, defining this triangle. If this was the, the attempt at a third hit on the lower trend line, 
things are looking very bullish for the precious metals because the price only got to 1205 whereas the rising trend line was at 1170 here and now we are seeing something that must be considered a legitimate breakout attempt here now how would we know if this breakout attempt is going to fail again of course we're not going to know instantly there's always going to be a delay effect because we have to look at the price action and determine when a trend is broken or when a trend has failed the number that i'm watching very closely is one thousand two hundred and sixty dollars per ounce if one thousand two hundred and sixty holds throughout any weakness here over the next one two or three weeks we have a legitimate breakout here and i'm telling you this is not going to be a small breakout so if you're bearish right now and you don't believe in trend analysis i would just say to keep your mind open to it because in my experience when you're talking about a major downtrend you will see technical based buying come into this market when this breakout holds and then especially when the first swing high is broken here which we're talking 1295 on the spot market this was the high back from june so i'm looking for something of a grind underneath 1295 and then the target for this move is the technical target is one thousand five hundred and twenty five dollars per ounce it's not going to happen overnight i anticipate that this will happen over the course of the next six to eighteen months depending on a number of factors what happens in north korea what happens with the dollar what happens with the stock market i can't say exactly other than the technical target is above fifteen hundred dollars an ounce we have the fifty percent fibonacci retracement of the entire decline that comes in at 1485 you have important horizontal support right here at 1525 that is now resistance so there's a confluence of three major resistance levels here right in the 1500 region of course when i give a target i'm never saying it's going to hit that dollar to the exact point but we're giving a nice legitimate region here for our targets so this should take anywhere from six to 18 months i'm making this call now as long as 1260 holds on any retest attempt if 1260 fails i will reverse my position because the market is showing me that something new is developing and i will then look at the next bounce to try to get short so Notice also I'm not talking about $5,000 an ounce gold. I'm not talking about $10,000 an ounce gold. I'm not saying that Armageddon has to happen. I'm not saying that World War III has to happen. This is a technical target based on the amplitude of almost a two-year triangle pattern, giving some targets based on Fibonacci's horizontal support and resistance and the amplitude of the triangle. Let us watch for this. Now, if we get that move t toward 1500 in gold, we've been watching. This was the chart from last week, and we are still seeing negative divergence in the gold miners. But what I have to say at this point is it looks like this is shaping up to be one of the rare times in which the gold miners are just lagging in the initial part of the move. We're seeing a nice close today above 23. You have something of a fanning out of trend lines here, depending on whether we are talking about a best fit analysis, that's the lower trend line, or an absolute highs analysis. When there is doubt, and especially when you're talking about a major trend line break, I like to draw both trend lines. And I like to say, this market needs to show me that it's going to break the absolute highs, including this swing high right here at point number two, and including this swing high just here a few days ago. So I do still want to see that broken, although we have broken the lower trend line, which is an absolute fit. So it looks like the miners are starting to get dragged higher here by the price of gold. 
Of course, I told you where I would reverse my opinion on this in the price of gold. We are looking at the ratio here. If you're interested in the gold miners, this has been quite a choppy consolidation. I think that this has done what it needed to do as far as markets go. We're talking a major surge. We're looking at the ratio of the gold miners to the broad stock market. The major surge in which you had many companies go up 100 or 200 percent in this six months of 2016, a major correction, and then this choppiness in the consolidation, basically washing out a significant a significant number of people here in this market. And I understand if you have no interest in the gold mining sector. I really do. I At certain times, I've not been involved in this sector as well. Um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with simply investing in the physical metal. I think that will do well over the long run. Uh, or if you're a short-term trader, of course. But I do have to tell you that when we look at the ratio of the gold mining sector to the broad stock market, the U.S. stock market, and we back this out and we look at the fact that that entire advance that we are talking about right here from 2016 to 2017 leaves the mining sector at the lowest that it has ever been valued in the history of data keeping between the gold mining sector and the broad stock market. I would tell you that if you are a contrarian and you've withstood this volatility that we have all been through over the last six to 12 months, I would tell you that the value proposition in here is probably the best that you can ask for. This ratio cannot go to zero. A ratio between real asset classes can never go to zero. This is the lowest that the ratio has ever been. The lowest that the valuation for the miners have ever been. We have a data point at a previous precious metals peak. When you go back to 1980, this ratio peaked at one to one. If that were to happen today, and how do we know, for example, that, well, the stock market is not going to just keep going up forever. If we look at dividend yields dating back to 1870 in the S&P 500, we are looking at dividend yields that are closer to previous crash levels than to anything resembling a value proposition in the broad stock market. If we look at another indicator, this is called the Buffett indicator after Warren Buffett. This is the ratio of the valuation of the total corporate equities in the United States relative to GDP. Very difficult to fudge this ratio. And what we're showing here is that the ratio is the second highest that it has ever been. The only other time that it's been higher was in 2000. And in 2000, the stock market entered a three-year bear market in which it lost 45% of its value. And of course, certain high-flying companies lost a lot more than that. So you take these two fundamental data points together, and we're now looking at the ratio of that on the bottom with the gold and silver mining sector as the numerator, as the top part of this fraction. And you are saying that based on these mathematics, the average gold miner would have to cre increase over 3,000% or the stock market would have to fall by 96.6% for this ratio to get back to what we have as a valid historical data point at a past precious metals peak. So obviously this is not going to happen today or tomorrow and certainly not going to finish happening even this year. But if we look at this, even if the ratio only gets back to the 2011 peak, we are still looking at a six-fold move higher in the average gold miner or something like a 65% drop in the U.S. stock market. This is the data. Could this time be different? Could the stock market just keep rising forever and the value of the gold and silver mining industry, one of the oldest industries in the world, could this just keep going down 
I suppose that's possible. Um, but you are talking about a, vo a value proposition here that is perhaps the best that has ever been seen. So there is certainly a lot to be said here. We're watching this breakout in gold. We want to see this hold 1260. And then we can start getting into some of the shorter term projections, how gold might move higher and lower to get to that target that I was talking about near the $1,500 level. I'm working on some projections right now. If you're interested in this kind of analysis, we do publish this weekly for premium subscribers. It includes analysis on physical gold, physical silver, the GDX, and the individual miners. We just bought three new miners today that are some of those extremely undervalued miners. And hopefully we will be able to hold these for the long run. My hope is to have these for a three to five year time period. Of course, if the market shows me otherwise, I'm not just going to sit on these investments and hope that they go higher. Of course, I'm going to take defensive action. So I like to say that although I hope this market is going to go higher, I'm a realist about it. And I'm going to follow what the market shows me. If you have a unique situation and you would like to discuss it, I do individual consultations uh, with individual investors and traders on a one-on-one -on -one basis. You can find more about that on the website. I do thank you for watching this broadcast. The next broadcast will be this time next week. Thank you. Have a lovely evening.